Now, for starters, I want to welcome everyone who's watching around the world. We have just confirmed that viewers from 27 different countries are tuned in right now on our DigitalMuscle.com webcast to watch this event along with you guys. This is the start of a really big week in our industry. Of course, in only a few days, we'll all convene in Las Vegas for the running of the Mr. Olympia, the Olympia weekend, Joe Weider's Olympia weekend. We're very excited about it. I just spoke to Olympia promoter Robin Chang. He has confirmed definitively that on Saturday night in Las Vegas, Dwayne The Rock Johnson will be there. We hope you guys can all make the trip because it's going to be a really big weekend. But I want to start tonight by talking about this event. Because it was only a few years ago that the sport of women's bodybuilding was in some trouble. Those who care deeply, as I know many of you guys do, about women's bodybuilding shared in that concern because the Miss Olympia was canceled, it went by the wayside, and the folks in Columbus decided to do away with the Miss International. And suddenly those who have spent their lives working real hard to build world-class physiques and showcase them on the biggest stages, suddenly began to question the future of their sport. They began to question whether or not there would be distinguished stages to show off all their hard work and all their dedication and to continue their journey in the world of women's bodybuilding. And right around the time that happened, my phone rang and I got a call from a guy, the, the voice on the other end was this deep, thunderous voice and it belonged to a man named Jake Wood. And Jake said to me, you know, we got a problem. The women bodybuilders, they deserve better. And we know in this industry, a lot of people make really big promises. And most of the time, they don't come to fruition. They fall short. But every once in a while, someone comes along and decides to be not a complainer of the problem, but a part of the solution. And what a big part of the solution Jake and Crystal and his team at Wings of Strength turned out to be, he said, I'm going to put on a contest that's going to be the new world championship of women's bodybuilding. I'm going to do it in a beautiful, classy venue, and I'm going to make sure everybody who cares as much about female bodybuilding as I do comes to this event. I'm going to give away a bunch of money. I'm going to give away almost $200,000 over the course of the night. I'm also going to give away a nice car so he ends up going ahead and says he's going to give away a custom Jeep. Well here we are tonight and I can tell you that everything that Jake and his team at Wings of Strength said they were going to do, everything they promised they were going to deliver, they have done just that. And I want you guys to stand tall for the hard work of Jake and Crystal and the crew at Wings of Strength because they sure do deserve it. That's your guy right there. I want to add that Jake absolutely hates the attention. He hates the praise. So it great gave me great satisfaction to see you suffer for a second there, Jake. But you deserve all that praise, and I know you're going to get me back for that. But as long as we're talking about female bodybuilding, Let's get into it right now because we love the history of bodybuilding, male and female alike. We love to celebrate its history. And the last I checked, there were only three bodybuilders in the history of the sport that have won the Olympia eight times. One of them is named Lee Haney. The other one is named Ronnie Coleman. Let's give it up for the other one. One of the greatest female bodybuilders of all time, our good friend, Linda Murray. time great folks you know I'm glad they look when you're in the presence of royalty you get a lot of uh, respect and a lot of praise I can't help but remember that 1990 Miss Olympia when you went toe to toe with a, a really classy lady named Bev Francis that one I definitely and you guys battled hard, and that was the night 
you for the very first time became Miss Olympia, and I have to imagine that to this day it must bring back very fond memories. Very fond memories. Uh, the Beacon Theater in New York City. Uh, just the fact that um, I remember the previous year in 1989 being in the audience and watching uh, Corey Everson on stage. Uh, you know, so it was like unreal. Unreal that in 1990 I won the Miss Olympia. And you'd go on to win the contest seven more times. The story of the Miss Olympia, of course, begins with Rachel McLeish and it goes forward to so many of those other iconic champions. Linda, why is it that you have stayed so close to the sport? I know you've achieved so much in your life. You've been recognized in so many different ways, but you continue to stay very close. In many ways, I've said that to Arnold many times about how he continues to stick around the sport. And uh, I'd love for you to tell everyone why you've remained so close to it. Well, um, you know, first I think uh, I really would like to thank Jake because when I think about uh, the fact that I get to see uh, the bikini competitors, the figure competitors, I know them by name, being at the event, that's really so special to me. You know, that's really, it's helped me a great deal. If you go back to my first competition and winning the Miss Olympia in 1990, like when I think about it, I'm not, I, I, I shouldn't be here. Like, but that keeps me going. So I thank Jake for um, just really giving me this opportunity. The fact that uh, I work for Wings of Strength, the fact that uh, I get to hug and meet all of the women in the sport. So yeah, that keeps me going. And before we get this thing started, I remember when the sport kind of went on a, a tough path and there were some questions like we just talked about. And I know you were one of the first people that stood up and said, we're not gonna let this go quietly. That's right, that's right. Well, you know, I mean, women, we work hard. Um, I really, I've learned that, um, I can go back to when I first started competing and my mom and dad, they thought it was strange and they wanted to know, you have your college degree, Bachelor of Science degree, you have a great job, you work in the cor a corporation, you wanna quit your job, let me get this right, you wanna quit your job and be a personal trainer and you're tanning, you're doing all of these strange things, you're, you're throwing away yolk out of the, the egg, you're, you're like eating, like, you know, so for them, it was strange, but, and, and actually my father, he did not attend my first Miss Olympia um, in 1990, because he was uncomfortable with his daughter being on stage in a bikini, and he wasn't in agreement with, with my path. Um, but my mom, she was there, she supported me. She was there at, at the Beacon Theater in 1990. And of course, in 1991, my dad was there um, when I won my second Miss Olympia. Uh, so uh, I just, you know, I know that women, it's up to us to decide what we think is the ultimate physique, period. End of story, you know? So, you know, I'm not giving up. Well said. Well, there she is, one of the greatest of all time. Before I walk off the stage, I won't do that without giving so much praise for Tim Gardner and Eileen and their entire team at Tim Gardner Productions, a huge part of making this happen. And um, Tim, we're so grateful for the work that you do. And, um, and I, would be remiss, uh, I would be remiss, Linda, if I didn't give just a mention of our friend, Lynn Conkright, one of the great female bodybuilders who we lost this year. So Lynn, if you're up there watching, I know she'd be really proud of what's happening here uh, today in, uh, in Phoenix. Yes, thank you. And uh, I put on my show in Norfolk, Virginia, and you know, she's from uh, Virginia Beach. And uh, she passed away the weekend of my show. And she's done such, so much for the sport. After the sport, working with uh, Joe Weider, and uh, with the athletes and getting us contracts. Uh, so that was, you know, amazing that it happened the weekend that I was actually in Norfolk. I had my gym there, had my show there. So yeah, pioneers, oh man, she's major. All right, well, one more time for Linda Murray, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna start the 2017 Rising Phoenix. And just one more thing to our friends and our family, our NPC family, our IFBB family, 
and all those that we know in, in Florida who are hunkering down tonight in anticipation for this hurricane. We're thinking about you guys. We hope you're safe, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.